Hello. It is nice to be here again with you. And I really wanted to talk about uh, a topic that can be frustrating sometimes, but it's really helpful to be able to do calculations correctly, doing them not only the mathematical part of it and getting a final value, getting an answer, but also getting the correct number of significant figures. So I wanted to do an example that included both addition and subtraction as well as division, since there are different rules that apply to both of those. So in the numerator here, we're going to be adding up five numbers. And each of these has a certain number of significant figures associated with them. So I wanted to take, I wanted you to take a look at each of these while I dip my pen in the ink and think about how many significant figures each one of these values has. And if you were thinking two, two, and two, you are correct. Okay, so we're gonna add those up and then we're gonna divide the result by this value here. This is 4.100. This number is written in scientific notation and it's times 10 to the third. So again, with this value here, Take a look at it and determine the number of significant figures that it has. And if you're thinking four, then you are correct. Okay, these zeros after the decimal point do count as significant figures. Okay, so in carrying this kind of problem out, the first thing you need to do, and the way this problem is given, is that these are carried out first. I'd forgotten to put those parentheses there. So that shows us that we're gonna add up these values first. Okay. And so what I highly, highly recommend doing, I'm not gonna say I demand it, but <laughs> I really highly recommend doing it because it's, it's difficult to see how many significant figures the answer would have when you add these up by just glancing at it. And if you were to put these into your calculator, you might not see what the final answer would have. So let's instead stack these up. Okay, so we're just going to take this part and we're going to do this first. Okay, let's just carry out this addition here. And when I say stack them up, I mean, let's, just like we're in elementary school, and we're going to add things together on top of each other, but we are purposely going to line up the decimal point in all these cases. So that 98 doesn't have anything past the decimal point, so we just leave that blank because that number was given with just two significant figures. So we can't change that. We can't just add point zero. It's not there in this problem as it was given. But this 5.0, that did have a zero past the decimal point, so we include that. And then with this point two four, there's our decimal point, and here's our values past the decimal point. Okay, now we can add them up, and we can see what happens here. 
So with addition, and this is also true for subtraction, we only get as many values past the decimal point as the number with the least number of values past the decimal point. And in this case, that's the 98 that doesn't have any significant figures past the decimal point. So what I do is I just draw this lightly colored dashed line to remind myself that the final value here will not have any numbers past that line. All right, nothing's going to appear there, but we can add up all of these that are on this side of the line. Okay, so 8 and 5, we get 13. You can, of course, put this into your calculator, but we're just going to do this by hand. Right. 9 plus 1 is 10. That's in the hundredths place. So we end up with a result of 103. Nothing else. Nothing past here. Okay. So this is the result from adding these three together. And this number has three significant figures. In shorthand, we say sig figs a lot, because so it's a lot easier and more fun to say than significant figures. We say sig figs. Okay, this is three sig figs. And now we are ready to carry out this division. We have determined what this equals with the correct number of significant figures. And so now we can go ahead and we can rewrite this mathematical division that we're carrying out. So there's our 103, and we're dividing it by 4.100 times 10 to the third. And now, in this case, we can follow the rules of significant figures when you are multiplying and dividing. And that is, the final result here will have the same number of significant figures as whichever one of these has the least number of significant figures. And in this case, we have three significant figures for the 103. For this value, we have four. So the final value will have three significant figures. So if you put that into your calculator and carry that out, you should get, you try this out, you should try this whole thing out yourself, but I just wanted to show you this as an example. They would get 0 0.025 So notice this zero here is past the decimal point, but it is before you see any of the values here. This is considered a placeholder. Here are the three significant figures that you get. And I want to show this to you again. writing this value in scientific notation so that you can really see and believe me, yes, this is three significant figures. And no, that zero there is not significant. Because if we rewrote this using scientific notation, we would need to write it like this. 2.51 to the minus 2. Okay. Scientific notation is always written in the form where there's one value, decimal point, and then however many numbers pass the decimal point, if there are any. 
there's always this one value here. And then times 10 raised to the power of whatever is necessary to give you the value that you have. So you can see here in scientific notation, you can easily see there are my three significant figures. So if you ever want to be sure that you are expressing a value with the correct number of significant figures, write it out in scientific notation because that shows it in the most clear way. This definitely shows it as well, but if ever in doubt, scientific notation works as well. All right, well, I hope this was helpful in doing some calculations with significant figures, identifying how many significant figures each value has, doing calculations that use addition. This also works for subtraction in the same way. You also want to line up decimal points. And then also doing a calculation that involves multiplication or, in this case, division getting a final answer with the correct number of significant figures and also expressing your final answer if you wish in scientific notation all right well as always please let me know if you have any requests and if you want to be alerted to videos that I do when I publish them then you can subscribe and there's also a little alarm bell thing that you can um, you can sign up to get notifications. And if you know of any other chemistry students who might benefit from learning from some of this stuff, be sure to tell them about it too. I love teaching this stuff and I'm really happy to help you whenever I can. And I will see you next time.